Hello and welcome to We Are Live. We are live. Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Denman. That's Travis Sorrell who Hello. brought you in. If you're watching live on the Facebook live stream, check out that uh, improved definition on the cameras. Huh? Definition, definition, definition. Shout out to our uh, our buddy John, who's made all these things happen. He owns by Jack. Shout out to Chris Gardner for all his work. Our buddy Jeff, who's been helping out. This has been a labor of love and creativity, getting this studio. And uh, we're excited to be here at the Midco Studios. How are you feeling today, Trav? Oh, Friday. It is Friday, and I'm about to Friday it out. Not sure what that means. Uh, joining us in the Midco Studio, he's the producer. His name's Chris Gardner. What's up, Gardsy? Good morning, gentlemen. That was concise. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Good morning, Walnut. Hey! Walnut's in the building! Mm -hmm. This is one of those things. We're just going to have to get used to it. Oh, yeah. uh, if you want to be part of the fun, obviously we have the Facebook live stream, but uh, you can email us, wall, at weareliveradio.com. You can text us. Did you guys know that? What? What's that number, Chris? Well, we have a text line. It's 314. Ready for this? Okay. Six six nine one four three one. Okay. That'll keep you anonymous for the most part. Ah. I share it internally, ah. and whenever you're, uh, I Google your number, I look into things. Okay, it's not true. Uh, we've got make it racist today. We'll do the sentence of the week. Uh, no guests today, and we do have fair or foul. I'm actually excited about this one because I know how jazzed Gardner gets. Gardner, what's a fair or foul topic today? Pretty simple. Well, they win $10 to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill also. That's pretty simple as well. Mm -hmm. Masubi. Simple topic. Okay. National Treasure 3. Wow. You are ready to complete the trilogy. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. National Treasure 3. Mm. That is your fair foul for today. Now, why specifically? I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'm yeah, about to great say, line. He's taken the national. Uh, he's taken the Book of Secrets, uh, the what was it? The Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. And what will he be trying he didn't to take the Book of Secrets? Okay. Well, is he going to steal that Bible that's supposedly made out of Jesus' skin? What? <laughs> you ain't heard that? I don't want to hear about that. I ain't trying to show up to no movie. That just seems... <laughs> I had not heard about that That was one. in Stigmata 4, The Reckoning. That Ooh. Mercy. Did I not see that one? That is right, very heavy and one. dark. And, yeah. and you saw what now? There's a Bible with the Lord's skin. Mm. Right? It's nope. kind of like communion. How do you know the premise mm. of Stigmata 4? And I the can't, Reckoning? And I can't oh, get you to... Oh, James Gunn. Some of his oh. best work. Okay. I can't even get you filmed to, on location in North City. You didn't know about this. I can't mm -mm. get you to go to one damn Marvel movie, but you know the premise to Stigmata mm. Four. It was on uh, Hulu for like three months. You don't know that it was filmed in North City. Are you lying? Is he making this up? I have no reason to disbelieve or not believe. Uh, Mr. You serious? Freeman. I thought I th Freeman Bosley Jr. was act uh, literally an extra in it. Are you lying to the listeners right now? Are you making this up? Is this real? Why are you lying? The landing in North City. Most of that movie was filmed there. Stigmata 4 was directed by Slew Zone, James Gunn, and Freeman Bozzi Jr., the former mayor <laughs> of St. Louis, was, a, <laughs> was an actor in the movie? He was an extra. He, he was like an extra seconds. in the movie. He did, a, he did one of these, like, ah, like, get out of the way kind and, of thing. And mm -hmm. why were... I don't... How do you know this? When did this happen? They returned to the site. That was part of the shtick. They returned to the site of the original Exorcist. And stigmata happened. Oh, okay. You seriously didn't know this? I didn't know there was four. I didn't realize they did three more movies after the initial stigmata. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing, and I didn't know James Gunn directed it. And I definitely didn't did know it was see filmed Super? in St. Did you ever Louis. see Super? Like Dwight Schrute was in that? Yeah, I know that movie. James Gunn did a bunch of like extra Yeah, that was James stuff. Gunn. Like That was his tape he sent in, that, or Disney was like, okay, yeah, if this guy can do this, then he can do Guardians. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm still Sigmata for the reckoning. Okay, well we gotta, well we're gonna get James Gunn in here soon anyway, so we're gonna need Ooh. to have a conversation. I can't believe you haven't seen it. You, I'm you not. Claim to be why a the hell would I need to Ooh. see Stigmata one, two, three, or four? Because Vashon High School was featured in it. I didn't realize that. V, get ready to roll. V, get ready to roll. What? What? V, get ready to roll. V, 
get rid of a what? What? I saw um, Jimmy McKinney save the day. He threw a basketball at the devil's head. I feel like now you're really lying. I when they Anthony opened, Bonner showed up. You're such a liar. The new gym at Vashon at the new school. Mm-hmm. I was there for the first game, and they were playing Casey Paseo, which is the big inner city school in Kansas City. It is indeed. the Paseo. You you watch yourself over there. That's the most St. Louis I street was in Kansas like City. One of it three is. or four white folk. Yeah, in the building, yeah. and that one remember, was a government official. Yeah, yep, I'm mm-hmm. certain that one was. Like, and uh, yeah. I remember that chant from the Vashon side, and then on the Paseo side, it was P A S E O, P A S E O, and there was this girl that was doing this pump thing with. Oh, and, and they, I, but she was doing it so quick, it looked amazing. Like I, I had never seen arms move that fast before. Nice. And then uh, Vashon won on a very controversial three point call at the end of the game, and we got the hell out of there mm. before they. Uh, some issues happen. Gardner going to the inner city, enjoying basketball. Look at you. What? You are a, you are a respectable liberal. Most days. Mm. Some days. I dabble. Ah, once a week. I dabble. National Treasure 3 is your yes. fair or foul topic. $10 to Buzz's Wine Grill. If you want to email in a sentence to a small paragraph on the, uh, on the subject, Travis, I... Uh, I'm excited about this one. I think Gardner's going to take it and run. You said so yesterday we found some, we had some really cool news uh, that basically came from the today's fair file. National Treasure 3 was discussed by CEO and Disney This time we're fighting lizard people. (laughs) I guess the conversation. My friend Alex Jones and I are taking (laughs) over. It was a shareholder meeting, and I guess Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, was asked a question about. National Treasure 3. <laughs> he said, yeah, it's a go. Wait, could this be where they find Walt Disney's original plans for Disney World in Very St. Possible. Louis? Very possible. Is that why they were here? Bob Iger. No. Boy, how much would our city, how much different would our city be had they picked here? Uh, we, we probably would be respectable podcasters where people would like to actually come on our show. That is not the question. Okay. Go ahead. But um, so it was interesting because Bob Iger... And many of the shareholders of Disney were in St. Louis yesterday at the Stiefel Theater uh, discussing their quarterly reports, upcoming uh, merger between Disney and uh, 20th Century Fox, uh, where a lot of the big time properties like X-Men and Avatar will now <laughs> They're go not over. control the Yankees anymore. Yeah, they're going to head on sure. over to the Disney brand now. And so National Treasure, I guess, I don't know if it was a relative of Gartner's. Maybe Gardner put a post-it note in Stiefel Theater, mm. but somehow a uh, member of the press got in a National Treasure 3 question, if, and Bob Iger was ready to give an answer. Yeah, if good. I would have known they were there, I definitely would have gone over there with a post-it note. Mm-hmm. Bob I, I would have given Iger, I'm sure a guy you just absolutely worship, yeah, I would have else. given him uh, the Greitens treatment with the post-it note, but a, a positive one. Not calling for Iger's job or anything, but just saying, putting him on notice in a way. Okay. I'm surprised. Is that the closest you've ever, ever been to Bob Iger? You this think? is, that was the closest I've ever been to Bob Iger. I was that close You're probably not to allowed being in, in a Marvel Orlando. movie. That was the closest I've ever been to being in a Marvel movie. Like if you would have known they were there. I'm surprised you didn't know. I, did I didn't know, know either. Well, there was, apparently it's a thing for shareholders to hold their meetings in different American cities every yes. time they have a meeting. So and they so threw St. a dart at a map and then they <laughs> said, ha ah, ha, you gotta go to St. Louis. Well, Bob Iger b- brought it full circle and acknowledged, yeah. of course, the origins of Walt Disney and his ties to St. Louis in the Missouri area, of course, being born in Missouri. And so, so we'll grace you with a one day <laughs> conference and never come hey, back again. We'll take it. We'll take it. We yeah. need it. Bob Iger, like, short of ice capades, this city will never see another mouse. Bob Iger did his best mm-hmm. actually to save football in St. Louis. Bob Iger was the one trying to keep the Rams in St. Louis. So you miss oh, him? Don't give House of Mouse. I am yeah. giving House of Mouse the credit that is due. Is this why you locked your Twitter account? No comments. Mm. Do you have a, do you have, what is the item, Gardner? What's, what's the premise of National Treasure 3? What do you, what what's do you your want dream saved? Premise? What do you want dream stolen? Premise. Well, I mean. There has to be aliens in it. And then who's the villain? It doesn't have to be, but I mean, you could take like a. What if he found the Angels Statue and of Demons Liberty? approach? What if he found the Statue of Liberty on a beach and realized it was our society the whole time? Oh, no, that's a different movie, man. 
Yeah. How high are you? I mean, I think you have to look back to the Book of Secrets, number one. You People would want to call back to what the president pointed out when he said to Benjamin Gates, Nick Cage's character, check out page so-and-so when he helped him find the Book of Secrets. Oh, wow. So you want maybe some closure on what that might have been, probably? I wouldn't mind Oak Island being involved. Oak Island could be fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you could have, like I was saying, you could do like an Angels and Demons Da Vinci Code type deal and maybe a trip to the Vatican Library is necessary this go round. Not a bad play. Um, there, you, could, you could try that kind of stuff out. I, am I really would like Oak Island, I think, at least just a mention. Who, who do you have as your villain? Is there a particular actor that you would like to see to play a villain in the National Treasure 3 movie? Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, boy. I like that call. Look at you. You have this movie figured out. Mm-hmm. I like this. Does, um, does Diane Keaton? Oh, what? No, that's Diane. Lane. Lane? No, it wasn't Diane Lane. Which one? One of the Dianes is in this movie. She was in a Glorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. Her name is Diane White Woman with an accent. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, man. Well, I'm just going to call her Diane White. She, was, she used to be accent. married to Pacey from Dawson's Creek. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she actually has an accent. I thought that was a thing in the movie, but no, that she has an accent. Well, I so. believe she's German. That's right. Chris? She's actually German. What's her name? They're Hang German. On. Hang on. Let me telepathically link okay, with her. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, hold okay, on. Wait, try let's try let's that one more time. Let's see, let's see that folder. Let's, 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 let's get a close-up on folder. that one. All right, Chris? Oh, wow, look at that. That's scary. Is that better? That's, yeah. that's, that's, there you go. Uh, wow. Are you looking it up, Travis? High no, energy no comment. This By the way, you don't want to see the Rotten Tomato score on National Treasure. Guess, Gardner. Do you know it? No. Um, 43. I would say 39 is what I was going to say. Damn, y'all are very close. It is 45. Oh. Yeah, I don't it's really care. Sean Bean was in the original. Why do I need Rotten Tomatoes to tell me Did what I enjoyed? Did he get killed? Surprisingly, he did not. He did not. Diane, okay. Diane Kruger. Yeah, Sean Bean was uh, Ian. That's right. Ian. And the woman is Diane mm. Kruger. I apologize. Diane Kruger. You're kind of fine. Uh, yesterday, I revealed uh, a story from my youth that oh, yes. uh, ended with a young lady, not so young lady, hanging upside down in the back of an ambulance transport mm-hmm. van. Mm-hmm. I would just like to report to little to no fallout. Okay. As I was of curious yet, about that. The elder union has not contacted me, but... Right before early bird special. So JPD knows nothing of this development of you almost killing an old lady. Well, no, she was she was there for it. So and she actually it? didn't care for the woman. She had cut her off in uh, the eighties. Like she recognized her. It's a small area. The woman had cut her off, and she's like, "You got yours." Are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> Man, you're having a rough Friday, Travis. I'm you to say, are. Yeah, he's going to be searching for thing, stigmata four. And. I am so... Freeman Bosley and Freeman stick Bosley. Of four. This is such a... Admit a, that you believed that. I, I did believe it. Okay. I asked several times if you were lying, and you said no. <laughs> so sorry that I believed you after the third you know time. Your problem is, you got such a big heart. I got a big heart. You got such a big That's, heart. I need you help. I need help with my heart. My heart is so big. It's like the Grinch. My heart just expands four times its natural size. I got too big of a heart. Normally, I would see a doctor about this, but it's just so big, so I decided to do an interview with Gail King on national television because I got a big heart. So big. Mm -hmm. You feel good about that? I don't. That son of a bitch. What an awful human being. Any more follow-up? How how are we going to take that into the weekend? For Black Twitter. Well, I'll tell you one way. CBS is absolutely milking the hell out of it. Mm. They're going to re-air the interview tonight in prime time. Is that right? Yeah. So they're getting their their money's worth. They have the women uh, who are alleged captives of R. Kelly. Gail King interviewed them yesterday. Mm -hmm. At least that aired yesterday. So, man, R. Kelly, this story, like I said, we've been talking about all week. It's fascinating because it's... It brings together everything. Like, so you have sex and scandal and money and talent. The very talented Again, artist. And even a, his whiny ass sing song, he's like, I'm sorry. What? I don't know. My heart. 
it's more in tune than I've ever been in my Musically life. Musically speaking, R. Kelly has had such a major impact on the industry. Uh, the guy, again, has written for Celine Dion. He's written for uh, Whitney Houston. The guy has written they don't for always Michael show, Jackson. He's they don't always show the edits where Celine's like, I don't know why you keep handing me these things about how great a sophomore in high school looks, but <laughs> I'm not going to sing about that. R. Kelly wrote for Lady Gaga. This guy has written for a lot of big-time iconic artists, and, of course, R. Kelly himself has major hits. The guy absolutely had the number one song, I feel like, for an entire year, and I believe I can fly. So you can understand why this story has so many legs and so many layers to it, but it's just... It's, I don't know, man. It, I feel like everything now, especially from the celebrity side, mm -hmm. is so, it's so theatrical. Like, everything is just... Even horrific things. Yes, even the yeah. horrific things. Like, like, remember during the Bill Cosby trial? and Even Bill Cosby was showing out. Mm. Like, as soon as the cameras got onto Bill Cosby and he was walking out of the courthouse, he was still trying to put on a show. R. Right. Kelly, we saw him in the interview. That guy is just pure theater, just getting up and yelling and pumping his chest and sweating and having his publicists come in. Like, the entire ordeal has turned into just theater. And it's... Oddly fascinating because the story itself is already Horrible. interesting, and yeah. now everyone's adding <laughs> these special effects. It turned into mm. a complete circus. So, good God! What's going to be the next big scandal? Are we going to are we going to be able to move off this, or is this going? Are we going to be able to? Let's do that. Let's project the next big scandal. Let's see if we can do. Let's see I'd if like we can get say, ahead of the I've, cycle. I've correctly predicted that uh, Trump's Trump's bulletproof, man. I shouldn't say that. Trump is, uh, he is... Teflon? He is Teflon. He Teflon is ducked, Don? Ducked and dodged everything, and I don't, we don't need to do 40 minutes on Trump, but right. it's, uh, that, that in itself is a story, that there have been 500 things brought up, and he just keeps moving. I'm still in wait-and-see mode. <laughs> it's going to be 2020 before you know it. Very true. Very How many true. times have we heard it? This is the only reason I say it. I, I don't know. I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm not to the point where I think that he's completely Teflon. I, I think after seeing Paul Manafort, who was sentenced yesterday in Call federal prisons for... That's a vacation, son. Uh, he's in jail, a mm -hmm. guy that, you know, <laughs> defrauded the American government and worked with despots, warlords, and dictators, uh, picked up only less than four years of a prison sentence after the prosecuting attorney recommended up to 25 plus. Whew. So is Donald Trump completely Teflon? Is this indicative of what he could see or maybe where the case is potentially, but Ooh, I, interview I think yourself there, about it. but I think there's a lot more still left to come out. And I, and like I said, we, if Robert Mueller, you don't even have the Mueller report yet. Exactly. And, and we don't wouldn't know. He have, wouldn't he have pounced already? I, no, here's the not thing. At all. I, I don't think so. I don't think no. so either. And I think that people cannot forget that while Whatever we get out of the Robert Mueller investigation, Congress uh, and, of course, the Justice Department will have to take that next step. Uh, the state of New York is already busy uh, digging deep into the president's foundation, his charities, his businesses, his real estate entities, and they're picking off things every day. So I still think it's just a little bit too early before we get down that path. Yeah. But I understand where you're coming from because you're right. It, it well, feels like am. if there was any other president, say, for example, there was a black president and he maybe wore a suit of a different color one day and just say hypothetically that maybe the media immediately pounced on that and made a big story out of it. Yes, we usually do that. But with this particular president, for whatever reason, I can't put my finger on specifically why he's allowed to be able to get through all of this. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't. I don't know. I will say his strategy of coming up with something as asinine every day to completely flood the new cycle yeah. is pretty smart. Well, that's, I mean, that's the best strategy he has right now. <laughs> he really does. Because I think pe that people take it. Yeah, people they're like, oh, take that I want thing. more. Oh, I'll take that. So and, why, I mean, if you're that, I mean, if you're a shit person like he is, right. why not do that? That's a good point. I mean, just flood the news cycle with yeah. just a bunch of, yeah. like, there's so much that has happened in the last... I mean, what would you expect? His own chief of staff once called him a terrible human being. That was a couple of years ago. And then you have the story that probably would be the number one Chris, story. Chris, you open this door. It's not no, 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 I'm yeah. just quickly... I'm about, <laughs> no, I'm about to close it. I'm about to close it. But I'm just saying, I think the fascinating thing about just covering 
events in America today is that you'll have a story like Ivanka and Jared not getting security clearances and then the president basically putting his weight on officials to make sure it's clear. That would be the biggest story of the year. I don't think I maybe have seen three, maybe five actual cable yeah. news stories about it. And I'm not saying the media hasn't discussed it, but I'm just saying in any other era, uh, uh, people who work inside the White House getting special clearance forced through by the president would be a bigger story. And in, in this case, to your point, Chris, Teflon Don, it's barely a blip on the radar. Real quick with Manafort, I think what I learned yesterday was, as I was told when Chris Correa was sentenced to 46 months in prison for what he did, <laughs> for hacking the Houston Astros database, <laughs> Here we go. that he had to be yeah. sentenced to that long, uh -huh. that period, because of sentencing guidelines. The judge you know, has to adhere to these sentencing guidelines. What else is he going to do? He right. has to be. That isn't true. No. That obviously isn't true. So I don't want to hear that ever so again. So let me get this correct. The guy Because who, a judge obviously did not adhere to sentencing guidelines yesterday. Oh, no. Korea got sentenced to 46 months. How many did Manafort get? 47. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, a guy hacks it to a special analytics site for the Houston Astros yes. has the same amount of time in prison as a guy who worked along with enemies of the state. Mm -hmm. To undermine the American democracy. Correct. <laughs> now, to be fair, Manafort will also be sentenced again next week. Yes, that's very true. I mean, for other crimes. That is. <laughs> so what you, you should expect is for him to get sentenced to a long time next week, and then President Trump to pardon him for that one, and then he only serves uh, as underlying one. That's what you should expect. So there's, there's where we go with scandals. Now, if you guys want... I did see that the Daily Show, Comedy Central, had a little. They've been doing. Um, no, we keep it fair here. We're fair and balanced. Let's let's look into another presidential blunder. Yeah, they um, mm -hmm. they've been covering some presidential scandals. I guess the worst presidential scandals on the show oh, as of late. Okay. And you brought up the tan suit. I did. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a little uh, segment, a short segment on it, kind of remembering, looking back on that scandal. Would How you like to, uh, Would you like to take let's a look see. at that? Travis? Take a look. See. Okay. How about this? Let's take a look at uh, what The Daily Show had to offer. The president came out addressing reporters on Thursday, and he was wearing this tan suit. Tan suit. Tan suit. <laughs> Obama's decision to wear a light tan suit at yesterday's news conference. He was wearing a tan suit. Light tan suit. I, I think it was shocking to a lot of people. Is this an effort shocking. to make him look warmer? That's a nice ass suit, though, man. <laughs> no way. I think any of us can excuse what the president did yesterday. I mean, and then for him to walk out. I'm not trying to be trivial here, but in a light suit, uh, a tan suit. Also known as tan gate. Tan <laughs> suit and how the tan suit made him look unpresidential. Whoever talked him into going into a tan suit, they're so desperate because of these low poll numbers, they're willing to do anything. <laughs> this is all Fox News, right? The tan suit made him look unpresidential. <laughs> <laughs> that was like seven minutes total on Fox News, right? Those were just like blip points. Man, I recall. Was, oh my I recall gosh, that's specifically the most hilarious the most thing I've ever I seen. But they, they ran with that for at least <laughs> at it, least three days. It wasn't a one-day thing. It wasn't a one-day thing. That's amazing. Let's, you know, our friend Lou Dobbs featured prominently in there. You remember him from such... Uh, oh, boy. Such commentary as... Oh, boy. The caravan of mostly Central American immigrants is now in the Mexican city of Huachula tonight where it has... <laughs> it's like a bee flew in his mouth right when he oh, got to oh, the ah. Mexican city. Oh, oh, ah. Ah. Oh, ah. Is now in the Mexican city of Huachula. Uh. Credit to him for like fighting through no, it. No, that we didn't fight through it. He <laughs> gave up on the word halfway through. He literally gave up. He didn't, not even halfway through the word. It's like he saw the first letter and was like, I'm just going to roll with this. He literally went, he saw the J and went, Wahoo ha. 
That is the most Travis Terrell thing you could probably do on <laughs> national television. What a disgusting thing to say about somebody, I know. Too. You just literally see it and you're like, wow. Uh, that is racist as hell, I think. Oh, I don't man. know. I think maybe. Do we want to uh, do? We want to keep the race going? Do you want to do some make it racist, guys? I think it's do about that this that hour. Time. Or you want to save it for the next hour? No, Gardner. What do you want to do? Oh, I don't care. Let's do some make it racist. It huh? is time yeah. for. Give me a you don't, you know, oh, I mean, gosh, just, you have to understand. Chris while he is a master <laughs> video editor and streaming expert, Chris, sometimes he needs a second. Chris could just, you could give him a t- give him a, a clue. You can hint at that where was the we're clue, going to and then you went ahead and go, yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> you the one who just. If we're I was going to talk to him about his skin color today because it looks so good. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I'm just saying, man. We, by the fact, we may want to do a live show from Wahoo. Where is that city, by the way? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you want to? You know what? Maybe mm. add it's a, on the on the wrong side of the wall. If you ask me. Add that city's name to the sentence of the week next week. Next week. Yeah. Next week. Next week. <laughs> next week. I know you already have worked on <laughs> the sentence of the week. All right, are we ready? It is time to... You don't have to do some stupid-ass make intro. It, well, I just want to set it up nicely for our listeners. Who are, well, then set it up nicely. Right, here we go, and welcome to We Are Live. It's now time for the segment that people love the most. This, this fair or foul? It's, you're it's time material. for Make It Racist. <laughs> I'm addressing the white elephant in the room. I'm breaking down the barriers of race by assimilation. Don't break it! I wouldn't mind to have black neighbors. That is racist. It's raining little white women. My prayers have been answered. Black women have the nicest asses. If that ain't the whitest thing a white man has ever whited in his life. You do not have to say African American. Just say black. Oh, well, in that case, you know what word I miss? Colored. Oh. 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 Don't worry, don't why, why is that funny every time? Tell you it's great. how to think and feel. If you have hate in your heart, let it out. I'm racist as hell. hell. Deserve. Ooh. By the way, is there a better sketch uh, than Dave Chappelle's The Black Clan? Like, that is that is gold. Like, that is just Probably, if not the writing best, gold. If that's man. not the best, top three. It's got to be one of, of the top time. three sketches of all time. What a brilliant sketch. It's just top to bottom. Just And the closing comment at the end of the sketch. What does he say? I cannot say it on this show because you we are a can. family program. <sighs> Boys and uh, girls, I like to keep have. you woke. I like to let everyone know what's going on around them. It's time to make it racist. Will this segment be able to go up on Facebook today? What? I know. On its own? Yeah. We'll see how funny it is. <laughs> ah. Facebook comments, text line, however you want to be part of it. Send us your make it racist submissions for Travis Terrell. Uh, we love those. We love interacting with you. So thank you for your, you know, medium to five or six level submissions. We'll get on. We'll get in on this. Uh, make it racist. We throw Travis a topic that he simply could not make racist. He does his best and also argues that it's always been racist the entire time. There's no need for me to actually make it racist. It already was, and I'm just pointing it out to your white eyes. Uh, Travis uh, brings joy to children, families. Everything. No, thank you. Roller coasters. No way you can make them racist. Roller coasters. See, that's what white people do for fun. You know what's a roller coaster in my neighborhood? Driving past the cops at 11 p.m. at night. Now that's thrills. Now that's excitement. Now that's that gets the blood going. Okay. You put your hands up when they do it. When oh you do yeah, it? man. I'm going down. Ah! I'm going down 270. I'm just like, ah, don't shoot me. And then they take a picture of me, and then I can get it once I get to the jail cell. Gotcha. Yeah. Roller coasters. You racist as hell. That is racist as hell. I switched up the camera. I know. That was well played. Well Gardner, played. what you got? Um, Textbooks. Huh. Textbooks? You mean those things we couldn't read until 1993? <laughs> That's, That's right. The official year. Uh, of black that was reading. the official year where we were black finally allowed. Black literacy in America, 1993. 1993, 94. Uh, that was I remember specifically because the Chicago Bulls beat the Portland Trailblazers in the NBA Finals, understand. and I was like, "Oh, that's what 
those words were talking about. Bef- before oh. that, you just had to rely on which team looked better. I did. I was just like, like I don't, I don't, which one's smiling at the end? I don't know what's going on here, but mm-hmm. this looks exciting. And then when I learned that the Jersey Red Bulls, what a big moment for me and my family. Mm. Textbooks? Ha! Been to college recently? You know how much textbooks cost? Dominated by black culture and left-wing ideals. Oh, my goodness. You know how much textbooks cost for black students? Talk to your... $3,000 a book. Talk to the Dems, hippie. I I agree. Textbooks? Expensive and racist as hell. And it's racist as hell! Let's keep it moving. Racist as hell. Hmm? That's what you're saying about all this stuff. I got one for you. Okay. 1994 Cadillac DeVille. Make it racist. Oh, my goodness. People don't know this story. Do we have a, like a minute or two, Gardner? Yeah. Okay. Leotis DeVille was born in Flint, Michigan in 1975. Leotis DeVille. Leotis DeVille. And Leotis used to work the assembly line. He would, he would walk all the way from Flint Who is this to again? Detroit. Leotis uh, DeVille. Okay. And he would walk from Flint to Detroit. Uh-huh. And along the way, he worked at the plant. Uh huh. And at the plant, which plant? Well, yeah, he was the Detroit plant. Oh, okay. And okay. so, in seventy, he, when was he born? He was born, I, I believe, in the seventies. Uh, and so, so he's he, bare, uh-huh. he's like ten years older than you. Uh, yeah, he's about roughly maybe about fifteen, twenty. I'm not sure specifically of the okay. time. Got it. Of how older he is than me, but keeping Leotis, time, keeping time, races his health. Well, so. Leotis would just he would be like, "Hey, we need a car that's good looking that also represents the culture in my community." Oh. And Bob Ford, who was uh, uh, Henry, it was Henry's little brother, Bob. <laughs> well, Bobby. He and Bob like you know, Bobo. You know, uh, Robert Ford. Here we go again. You know him. And so he was like, "No, Leotis, we don't care about your culture. The blacks don't drive cool cars." And he said, "Listen here, Mister Ford. One day, my name's gonna be on one of your vehicles, and all the rappers are going to drive it around." And Bob went. What's a rapper? And so Leotis eventually killed Bob Ford. People don't know this. He murdered Bob Ford, and he was able to then submit his ideas for the Cadillac DeVille, thus becoming the most popular vehicle of black Americans. Thank you, Mr. DeVille. So you, sir, and the system that was a part of holding you back was racist as hell. That is racist as hell! Oof. That's, a, That's a good story. That was an interesting walk that we was... just took. Uh, from, the, uh, <laughs> from the Facebook live stream. Did you just go? That's a good story. Did you surprise yourself with that one? I, I thought it was a good one. <laughs> That's a good story. Make it racist. Gail King from the Fancy Foyer. Ooh. Gail King. Oh, he's King. conflicted. Oh, no. no. <laughs> just... Another sister sent out by a white corporation to completely interrogate another black man in our community for our entertainment. Mm. Gail, how could you be a pawn to the scheming of CBS, the same network that gave you the shittiest sitcom, How I Met Your Mother? You're going to be a pawn to that? You racist as hell. That is racist as hell. No, actually, Gail King is a lovely woman. What if the show was called How I Met Your Father and then he left? Would it have been good then? I don't know. What's the look about? You racist as hell. I did it to you again. (laughs) Gardner, you got one? Uh, let me look. I actually make notes on these throughout the week. Oh, yeah, Jesus that's kind of scary. Uh, make it racist. Macaroni and cheese from uh, Patty Handy. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, tough. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Jesus. May I? Please. High salt content in most macaroni and cheese includes uh, a grain or a rice, which leads to inflammation. Yeah. In the body yeah. of black folks. Okay. Because it's delicious yes. and pairs well with black consumed foods. Okay. Macaroni and cheese trying to kill black population. Macaroni and cheese. I don't care if Chef Boyardee, Dr. Cheese. Yeah. Whoever. Okay. 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 Get that camera on that man. Put that camera on that man. Hit him, Chris. Hit him with it, Chris. You racist as hell. Yeah. Oh, All right. 
Look at that. A team don't effort. Don't forget. Okay, we get team, a, team black guy because it is so easy to win arguments. I'm if you telling just go, you, man. If you just go, mm hmm. You got, and, and then if you go, you see them crackers. <laughs> crackers in mac and cheese. Hey, man. Crackers, <laughs> slang for whites. Slavery whip cracker horrible racist as hell again. There we go. That is racist as hell. It is about yeah, it's so look easy. how look at see we see how it I feel. So it easy. feels good to be woke, man. It feels good to be woke. Get me. Chris something. is waking up. He finally waking up. What can wake my me first up. wake me up inside? What can my first black fashion move be? Dude, you got Because wear. naturally as a, a husky Boo -boo. as a husky white guy, my inclination is to have a thin beard mm -hmm. if I'm gonna try and uh, to assimilate into black culture. Yeah. But I feel like that's been done. So wave cap? You need a sweet throwback Paul Korea jersey. Oh, no. Oh, Paul you're, you're saying dip like a toe a, in the yeah, water. Yeah, dip your toe in there. So you get right, it. Right, so right, people right. are like, oh, damn, that's a dope throwback. Transition and a over Mighty to uh, an ABA jersey eventually. And, and eventually. At some point, you can then wear a really sweet Boston Celtics Jason Tatum jersey. Because mm -hmm. not only is it your white man's mm -hmm. team, but then you also have the St. Louis connection. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Yeah, man. it's an ease in. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Jason Tatum and being light-skinned? Jason Tatum being light-skinned. You're racist as hell. Racist as hell. not even... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gail King ain't the only one that's uh, pretty good under the lights and in front of a camera. Mm. Feel good about that? I do. Okay. And that was Make It Racist. Oh, is that you done? Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I didn't think you ever. Oh, y'all just going to continue to make yeah. me work? Y'all just going to continue to make me work on this damn show. That's racist as hell. That is racist as hell. Having me work while I'm at work. Who the hell y'all think I am? Harriet Tubman don't have me out here working at eight in the morning doing a podcast. Something that I wanted to do. That I suggested we do. That's racist as hell. That is racist as hell. Hmm. I'm back to looking at my shoes when people ask I, me I'm, what I do. Yeah, I kind of noticed that the other day. I know we have people what in do the do? office. What, what, do, so what, do what do? is this thing that goes on here? Uh, oh, we film adult films in uh, there. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a better option, a better than, option. than saying we're, we're a, a We're adult film yeah. directors. Just ignore that room. Uh, it's messy. If you do want to know what we do, check out midcoast.media now, everybody. Uh, that was great. Great segment, everybody. Okay, I wasn't sure. Are we done? Yeah, that's okay, it. Okay, I wasn't that's quite it. sure. Everything's racist. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. That is a shirt. You see? That is a hoodie that I would love to wear around the you office. You see how it now, and I don't have to lose weight because I just go, I'm beautiful. Look at you. <laughs> you body positive, and I like that. Uh -huh. Look there at you accepting your inner black woman. Uh huh. Especially when you've been in some black women. Come Up on. top. Huh? Come Anyone? On. Huh? Gardner, you want to high five? Gardner, get on the screen. Yeah. Gardner, jump on the screen. Here you go. Ah, put do your hand up. Do the thing where his mic yeah. looks like your. Uh... Yeah, there we go. Do the like thing that. where his mic looks like your thing. No, Chris, we're a family show. Oh, okay. We don't do that here. Uh, no. Speaking of families, we have uh, a wonderful sponsor who has a food truck, Travis, from a tropical location. I'm glad you mentioned that, Chris, because the weather in St. Louis nice. is warming up today. And you Dude, know what? it's going to be 60 degrees tomorrow. Sorry, finish oh, your Oh, no, finish man. I was just going to say, you know what they say when you land in Hawaii? What, what a they, fool! What do they say? And aloha. <laughs> where does, where's Buzz's aloha come from? From the heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. Your heart will be warm whenever you eat masubi or poke at Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. That's right. The single-handed best. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Most Hawaiian food truck yeah. that sponsors this yes, show. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Tell you what, that's why you pay for copy like oh, that. Oh, boy. It's going to get delivered right. Buzz's Hawaiian Grill, locally owned, locally ran. That would be weird if it wasn't, if they were like drone piloting it from Utah that would or be something. So that would be dumb. very strange. I mean, very weird. You'd be into that? I'd be, I'd be like, oh, shoot, here come Poke. <laughs> yum, 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 That's yum. Buzz, if you're watching. That's him flashing the, uh, the hang loose sign. He lived in Hawaii for years upon years, misses the fresh food. So instead of bitching about it, he did what all Americans do. You start your own business, you grind through, yeah. and you go and you serve people all around the St. Louis area. Check out Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. You know what, Travis? They have a Facebook page. You can check out all their locations around town. Look for some great video content we're going to be doing with them soon as well. Love Buzz. Love his family. Love that he works with us. And uh, he's a great dude. So you need to not only enjoy wonderful food, but get to know him a little bit. It's very, uh, very... 
very advantageous to be friends with Buzz as well. We met Colton Wong through him. We did. We did. What a good time Colton, that was. friend of the show now. He is a friend. He's a brother of the show. He certainly is. Uh, it's the first segment on our wonderful podcast. Look at it's him Friday. Look at him reset. There it you is. Go. See, you got the live listeners. People on uh, iTunes are like, thanks. Uh, <laughs> you've told me this seven times. Uh, if you do want to get your fair or foul topics in, we love those submissions. Wall, W-A-L, we are radio.com. Ten bucks to Buzz's Wine Grill National Te- Treasure Three is your topic. Uh, do you guys remember whenever it was? Like, do you guys care when movies come out outside of Marvel movies now? Yeah, there are a couple movies that I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to uh, Jordan Peele's follow up to Get Out Us, which I believe is going to be released later this month. You think that's going to be solid? I yeah, I think uh, the can uh, it live up because Get Out snuck up. They tried to make it look true. like a just straight up black film right right and it was a horror film right. which i've said that from the i was like why did you do that to that movie like that was so weird right. how they marketed it first and then it turns out to be this massive phenomenon those are some those are some big shoes to fill man absolutely oh, so. anyway, excuse me those are some big jordans to fill man okay you do but we just wear shoes as I well i thought that was good we wear shoes as well it's man. for our culture remember oh, i'm on okay. your side don't oh, okay. look at me like the white devil okay look okay. at me like Chris Maine. Oh, let's <laughs> pump the brakes there. Chris Maine. Is I that know, a good name? No, I yeah, no, I look forward to. There are some movie releases outside of Marvel that I'm absolutely looking forward to. So I'm looking, yeah, like I said, Jordan Peele. And then, of course, What if he blows it? Will you admit it? Or will you say, you know, it was pretty good? That's a good question, Chris. Because you could swing and miss with something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I... Ew. Oh, man, I didn't now, think about in that. In his case, he'll never be allowed to make a major motion picture again <laughs> if it misses. Basically. The only, no. only brown person in Hollywood that's allowed to screw up and still continue to make multiple films is M. Night Shyamalan. Jamie Moyer's face. What happened with that? How did they let him keep swinging all the way back around to where he was good again? That was the strangest thing I've but ever the, seen. I, honestly, is, it because, is, is it because he has a following? Is that what it is? I think He has I, an entire continent of people that root for him? Well, he's a good writer. I, I think sometimes it's his execution can be poor, but I think that's what equality looks like is horrible. that you can make multiple, you can be a black or brown person in Hollywood, make a few bad movies and still get the opportunity to continue to make movies. Think, that's what equality looks like. Do you think Asian, <laughs> Asian uh, countries supported him the entire way through? Like I bet, I, I don't bet know those are, cause all those movies were big. I so I bet they. I wonder if they did I well in they, China. I mean, and I India. think as far as his, I mean, his big budget films, he didn't do so well on. So I don't know if he was able to recoup anything for their studios. But I think things like Split, um, you know, Glass, those are low budget that have a big following and can make a ton of money in the box office. So I can see why studios still bank on mm-hmm. him. But that's what people want. You want to get to the point where women, blacks, browns can do projects in Hollywood if they swing and miss. Oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, what kind of dystopian future are you talking about? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple are cute, you know. Oh, cool, Black Panther, neat. Yeah. Uh, I, we're, equality, that's such a strong yeah, word. That's a big word, so. Thank you, I'm glad we agree. Oh. Uh, Jamie Moyer's Fancy Foyer loved Get Out. You know why? Why? Bradley Whitford and Catherine Keener <laughs> stole the show. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that brother was really scary, too. I enjoyed that film because those are two white people I trust the most. <laughs> Catherine Keener and Bradley Whitford. I do. Because Bradley Whitford is always Josh Lyman to me from West Wing. Yeah, that's the and only that's reason the only you reason. trust him. And I trust him because of that. And I was like, this was great casting because I trust everyone in this white family. And they hit you with the, oh, no, Allison Williams, she was inside. Oh, oh. no, you, you was playing the man the entire time. Allison Williams. Fine as daughter of one Brian Williams. Damn, she fine. Mm. You feel good about that? I had to let it out. And it's outside of Black History Month, so I can officially say that. But I'm looking forward Are to you, that. Why'd you bring that up, though? I'm curious. You trust uh, the Brian Williams saw, family? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I just trust her and that ass. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. I hope she listens. You trust that ass. I you trust. think she's streaming? Do you I think re- she's an iTunes listener or a Facebook Live watcher under Allison a dummy Williams. account? I respect that ass. Mm-hmm. Do you feel good about how you act on a daily basis? I am not proud of it, Chris. In fact, I was talking to my uncle last night, and he was, uh, he was like... You're a rare case of vain and at the same time horribly inaccurate. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I feel like not at any point in that statement there was a compliment. <laughs> I feel like you just... You doubled down on an insult, 
halfway through your sentence. I tried to think of two things that would make you crawl on the inside. And, and you did. That's what came out. And that's what came out. You are a terrible person, <laughs> but you are the worst Effective. at life. Effective, though. What? Effective. No, my uncle literally goes. I'll make a good parent. <laughs> and no. And, you know, my, my family passive aggressively critiques me on this show, and they say, so, so you're going to be filthy every day? And, and I say, that's Chris. He makes me say these things. Oh, like I'm passing you yes, notes? Like, hey, like, say the N-word like, again. Like Chris writes it in the script. Say we have the scripts. N-word. People don't know this. <laughs> say the N-word again. See? See what I mean? But I'm not going to do don't it. Don't clip that off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 That's your testimony. When you go yes. talk to Gail King about the horrors of working with... Uh, the of German descent. Oh, I got of, the guy of, down of pat. European descent. Direct line to John Smith, which you would keep bringing up, right? In your Gail King interview. B. Gail King interviewing okay. me about my time on We Are Live. <clears throat> Do I look proud? Man, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious right now? Yeah, is this ca- is this the camera? Is this the ca- is this camera H- on? H- hush, baby. Huh? Hush, baby. That's the no, camera. man. I'm up. I'm fighting for my fucking life, man. You don't have to say the f word. No, man. We're I on. come in at seven fifty two. You're supposed eight to minutes be, before the show starts. You're supposed to be in at six thirty. I'm pre- I'm supposed to be baby, here at six. Babe. I was supposed to be here at six thirty, but you're gonna fight for my life. That, that, you know, how dumb would I have to Tra- be? Travimetrius? Tra- how Trava- dumb would Trava-metrius. I have to be? How dumb would I have Trava-me- to be? Travimetrius. Travimetrius. A Philly steak sandwich from Subway at 6 30 a.m. Travimetrius. Then go in the kitchen myself, make the sandwich myself, all while trying to get ready for this show. Travimetrius. I'm just saying. Travimetrius. Gail. Baby. I'm just saying, man. Travimetrius. I've been doing this for three years. Three and a half. Hey, man. To be fair, we did the math, and every time you were late, you've been doing this for two and a quarter. I've technically been doing this for 16 months. <laughs> Travimetrius. Sit down. Fighting for my life, man. Sit down. Fighting for my life. People have alleged that you're wearing a sock cap today because you haven't shaved your, uh, your head. What's going on with that? I'm fighting for my life, man. <laughs> Travis, despite having an extra Achilles tendon mm-hmm. and better muscular uh, DNA, you remain out of shape. Man, Travis listen, listen here. why? Listen here, I don't understand. Why? You have three how, Achilles tendons. I don't understand why people are on my case. Do I show up to work at 8.01 when I'm supposed to be there at 6.30? No, 6.30. Maybe. But I'm fighting for my life, man. <laughs> I got, I'm gonna call you with one more, Travimetrius. Sorry, Gail. I just come on this. I just came on this show. How would to your talk mother about feel about the this racism of We Are Live? And and every time I think Excuse about me, it. Excuse me, sir, sir, sir. Real quick, I'm just gonna point something out. The logo is literally half black and half white. It is equal parts black and white. The content. They've interviewed more black comedians than anyone in the history of the planet Earth, outside of Tavis. I'm fighting life. for my life. Right. There he is. And scene. Oh, oh, we were, yeah, we were acting scene. Oh, scene. Yeah, yeah, scene. OK, yeah. would you have preferred another uh, formal long name or did Travimetrius hit home for you? Oh, Travimetrius, I felt that. Mm-hmm. And the way you said it in such a calming black you have way. to you have to Travimetrius. It's either that or I'm a judge and my whole judge get out and I go, excuse me, Mr. Terrell. You could have just Marvis Morell. You could have also just called me Travis, man. Why you always got to add Ametrius <laughs> to this shit, man? Gardner, more, I'm more sorry. Impactful. I, if you call me Christopher, that's much more ooh, than a Chris. I'm sorry you weren't blessed with a full name. <laughs> Chris Timmy, you're racist as hell. Mm-hmm. Travimetrius. You just could just say Travis. Travis could be a black name, too. Why, why isn't your first name Terrell? That would give us so much more street cred. We haven't talked about that in a while. Well, yeah, for those who don't know, my mother... Wanted to make sure I was employable when I got older. So she named you Travis? Yeah, so that way when I showed up Why aren't you digging ditches and pouring concrete? Well, she was hoping at some point that I would go to law school. (laughs) Whoops. Uh, (laughs) Great performance. Let's just say that ass got in the way. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Got some compliments on your performance in the comments. Uh, How about the fancy? Fine for my life. 
Uh, the segment is over, but uh, Foyer wants walnuts to be made racist. I don't think that'd be too hard. Our listeners live in rural Missouri. They're walnuts. And racist as hell. There it that is. is racist as hell. There you go. You know what's not racist as hell? What is that, Chris? Gateway powder coating. You know why? Because they can put great black powder coating mm. on barbecue grills in which people of color grill on. Man, white people grill as much as blacks, man. That's not what Forest Park says. That's a good point. Gatewaypowdercoat.com for all. I, that was not approved copy. I just want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> Gateway Mark, powder Mark coating. Mark Ekman does not approve this. <laughs> Fast, durable, and affordable. Gatewaypowdercoat.com. Be sure to support them. You know why, Trav? Why? Because they support us. Not you, but okay. us. As Affordable a, as a and durable and fast. Gateway powder coating. That's not the ad. Okay. Gatewaypowdercoat.com. Check out all their capabilities. The number one powder coating resource in the Midwest. I don't know if you see the arch in their logo. Oh, I see it. That means they care about the same. And they have powder coated areas. the arch before. That's not. Uh, May, nope. <laughs> May, that's May. Come to, <laughs> come here, to St. Louis it. and check it out. You let's may do never here, know. You be hype man for Gateway Powder Coating. Okay, let's Travis, go. all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Name me three St. Louis monuments that Gateway Powder Coating has powder coated. Number one. King Louis statue. Number two. Bush Stadium. Number three. Arch. Wow. <laughs> I trust him. Do the research. <laughs> Gatewaypowdercoat.com. Thank you to them and all of our wonderful sponsors. The views sponsors. expressed by the co-hosts of We Are Live are not expressly that of Gateway Powder Coating. Mm -mm -mm. So are you going to go see the uh, Mar Marvel's Miss Maisel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, why did I laugh at that stupid-ass joke? Shoot! Don't give him credit for that dumb-ass joke. That's what I, that's why I was going with the movie talk the whole time. I just wanted to say Marvel's <laughs> Miss Maisel. Marvel. Damn it, it was like a 20-minute setup. You see what it is? Male-dominated uh, field? I see why you said yesterday you got to let it marinate where you're telling a joke on stage. Thank you. You were Thank setting you. that you up understand since 8.25. Right. Yes. <laughs> I am going to absolutely check. I Hang on, I have to Wait, talk I about under, Trump for 17 I, minutes, Chris. I, I understand comedy. <laughs> Marvel, uh, Mrs. You've had every A-list comic ever in here. But you know what? I just taught you the most you've ever known about this comedy. This is very true. <laughs> you have broken down for me. Captain Marvel in th uh, theaters this weekend. I am Now, excited. why isn't her logo in pink? <laughs> <laughs> I went I in expecting a superhero, <laughs> and I got some kind of tampon <laughs> ad for two and a half hours. <laughs> I don't understand it, and I'd like my money back. Why ain't Captain Marvel in a kitchen? Ain't one kitchen scene. I'll tell you another thing while I'm here. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> Wait, sir, what? It's not a... Unsolicited. Uns unsolicited. <laughs> unsolicited. Just thought you should know. <laughs> unsolicited homophobia. Yeah. The thing that makes Ooh, Missouri great. Oh, good band great. name. Unsolicited homophobia. Oh, that's live, a good band Live name. streaming on Stormfront all day. <laughs> What up, St. Louis? We're unsolicited homophobia. <laughs> we shouldn't have picked the chip to play in the grove. <laughs> we should not be at a dummy cowboy. Captain Marvel uh, actually hit theaters last night. I am going to check it out this weekend. I She apparently plays a pivotal role in the upcoming Endgame. Alicia Silverstone was a great Batgirl. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that film. It was one of my favorites. That's sexy. you know why? Because I could see her hair. I knew it was a girl. <laughs> so I'm excited. Brie Larson. Um, by the way, she is quality white woman. I why are you girl. doing this? Huh? Do what? you need to go relax mm -hmm. for like three and a half? I'm just saying. Have something. you seen her? <laughs> have you seen? Go fire a few Brie off Larson? and come back for the her? next segment, huh? My God. I'm like, okay, Captain Marvel. I'll tell you what. You can be a captain of my pants. More attractive Looney Tune growing yeah. up. Woody the Woodpecker as a girl or Bunny, Bugs Bunny as a girl? Wait. He's thinking about it, folks. Wait, was it Woody Wood, 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 Woodpecker? Was it? <laughs> Clip that off. <laughs> uh, we, can play the, we can play this game for another hour if you want. Damn it. I know every corner of your mind, Terrell. <laughs> Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> wait, wait, I, I, you, I know, even, you know, wait, was it Woody, Wood, 
Would it? Would he? Would picker? Here's why I tripped up on that because uh, I was break in, it down. I was envisioning Woody Woodpecker mm, actually yeah, pecking were. wood, mm-hmm. and when he pecks wood, he stammers, and that's why I stammer. Give me a good, w- give me a good woodpecker laugh. <laughs> that's that's Woody. Doing, uh, that's Woody doing his, uh, his Vegas stage show in a lounge. <laughs> Three, three tourists are there. They're like, oh, he's, he's kind of looking rough. These well, he's days. a smoker, huh? Seven <laughs> sexual assault cases against Luck him. That's all be he the lady tonight. Hey, I'm Woody Woodpecker. Everyone, good night. <laughs> oh. yeah. oh, good night. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, guys. It's not bird flu. Oh! <laughs> it's, it's not bird flu. <laughs> Man, that would be a great line for Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm tired of you guys' faces, and uh, we need a break. What Garzy needs awful smoke. program. We're live from the Midcoast Studios. Check out midcoast.media if you want to know uh, how to not work with us. There are several <laughs> options there. I'm Big thanks you, to uh, our friends here in the Dot Zach Building, Cranesburg Arts Foundation. Wonderful, wonderful landlords and uh, partners of ours. Love, love what they're doing here in Grand Center in St. Louis. Quick break on We Are Live. Chris Emmon, Travis Terrell, and Chris Gardner. Share and invite if you're watching on the live stream. Let's pump this up for the second hour. It's going to get very strange. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back.